السلام عليكم ورحمة الله آه اسمي دكتور عبد القادر المغربي اخصائي جراحة عامة آه عضو هيئة تدريس جامعة آه كلية الطب البشري جامعة الشدابية آه اعمل بمستشفى شهيد محمد القريف في الشدابية آه عندنا موضوع اليوم هو عن انتستر ابستراكشن موضوع مهم جدا آه حنحكو آه شوية بالعربي وشوية بالانجليزي آه اهم شيء المعلومة توصل الأوبجيكتيفز حنحكو عن إبيديمولوجي في باول أوبستراكشن مايلي حنحكو عن إنتستنال أوبستراكشن سمول باول أوبستراكشن مايلي حنحكو عن الديفينيشن أوف باول أوبستراكشن حنحكو عن الكلاسيفيكيشن حنحكو شوية عن الباثولوجي أوف إنتستنال أوبستراكشن الجزء الثاني حنحكو عن الكلينيكال بريزنتيشن أند كومبليكيشن أوف إنتستنال أوبستراكشن حنحكو عن سبيشال إنفستيجيشنز أوف باول أوبستراكشن وفي النهاية حنحكو عن المانجمنت أوف باول أوبستراكشن The best thing to start is with a real case scenario of power obstruction. We're going to talk about a real case that we had for a long time. This case is a 30-year-old female Libyan patient. She was completely all right, otherwise healthy. Presented with a history of abdominal pain, vomiting, abdominal distension, constipation, all for five days. She presented with abdominal pain, vomiting, abdominal distension. Constipation for five days. History represented the complaint. The patient was completely all right in the last five days before admission when she started to develop central abdominal pain, which is colicky in nature, on and off, and the pain is severe. The pain score was 7 out of 10, as described by the patient. She was uh, rolling in the bed, as she said. The pain is so progressive in its course is not radiating anywhere. It's not related. It's not relieved by analgesia or medication. Associated with the projectile vomiting many times, ten times, cringe first, then became feculent with foul smell, with no hematemesis or melina. There is a history of constipation, but the patient said that she passed flatus once today. No history of weight loss, no history of diarrhea, no history of PR bleeding, no history of jaundice, no history of heartburn, spepsia. The patient was thought to have a gastritis and was treated with omeprazole as outpatient for two days by her general practitioner. But unfortunately, she didn't improve. Systemic review was unremarkable. The past history was significant for appendectomy or appendectomy 12 years back. And the patient has uh, to have clinical dermatological problem called eczema, and she's on medical treatment. Social history: she's divorced. The family a family history was negative. Uh, habits unremarkable. Travel abroad for dermatology consultation. Her vaccination up to date. On examination: she is sick. Can't abana distress. Not again. She's in pain with dry tongue, vitals, the pulse rate 115, weak volume, temperature 37.5, blood pressure 100 over 60. Abdominal examination, the abdomen, there is a scar at right iliac fossa or at McBurney's point, or what's called a benzectomy scar, no hernias. The abdomen distended, you can say the abdomen distended, but symmetrically distended. It moves with the breathing. Uh, it's soft, but tender all over. On palpation, no organomegaly. It has a tympanic percussion note. The bowel sounds was exaggerated, increased. Rectal examination revealed empty rectum with no masses. We go to the lab data and imaging. White count was 16,000, high. General function, urea, creat urea and creatine was high. Serum urea was 60. Serum sodium was 130, which is below the normal. Serum potassium was 2.9 millimole per liter was below the normal. The patient had ultrasound document from outside the hospital with lots of gases it was inconclusive, a small amount of free fluid in the pelvis. We did an x-ray, abdomen, upright, 
erect abdomen and lateral decubitus x-ray we have this picture we have centrally located multiple means more than multiple air fluid level air fluid level air fluid level with shadow of plica circularis or pelvic covenantis of small bowel most likely you know either jejunum or ilium but it's small bowel here's the lateral decubitus x-ray here's the lateral decubitus x-ray the same finding multiple air fluid air fluid level same now intestinal obstruction is a common surgical emergency that carries favorable prognosis if recognized and treated promptly yeah it's obstruction ممكن جدا يجي اي فيزيشن او اي سيرجن في جود بروجنوزس لو واحد يقدر يدير ايرلي دياجنوزس وتعالج ايرلي هاي لكن عنده هاي مورتاليتي اند موربيديتي اف ذا بيشنت كيم ليت ممكن جدا مرضى هذول ما يقدوا واندرينج سام وير يجوش للمستشفى الهوسبيتال يبداوا يمشوا بين الكلينكس اور ذي جو seek another advice for whom they already came late for them and them high mortality and mobility or go undiagnosed or whom they like this case they treat it as gastritis and it wasn't gastritis it was mechanical or whatever bowel obstruction or resuscitated in a decently before surgery or more good than mandalash good resuscitation couple of surgery mandalash i fluid replacement electrolyte supplement nasogastric decompression i think killing the outcome of the patient mechanical obstruction is of two types according to the presence or absence of blood supply uh, we have two types of mechanical bowel obstruction strangulating bowel obstruction means there is a compromise to the blood supply and you know, there is a jeopardy to the blood supply you know, the blood supply is not good for the bowel it's called strangulating this obstruction means there is a decrease or inadequate blood supply to the gut or to the bowel or to the obstructed bowel it's called strangulating bowel obstruction it needs and it requires urgent surgical intervention it requires urgent surgical intervention Simple means there is intestinal obstruction, occluded bowel, but the occluded bowel has a good blood supply. The incidence, overall incidence, the overall incidence of adhesive intestinal obstruction is 30 to 40 percent, which is quite a good ratio. The most common cause of intestinal bowel obstruction is adhesion. 60% followed by strangulating hernias. The most two common things causing small bowel obstruction, adhesions, and hernias, followed by malignancy and valvulus. <laughs> if we want to define intestinal obstruction, it is nothing but a restriction to the normal passage of intestinal content. It's a restriction of, to the normal passage of intestinal content. We can classify small bowel obstruction into two large categories mechanical bowel obstruction, which is called true mechanical obstruction. The, thing, the other thing is functional bowel obstruction, mechanical bowel obstruction, true, true obstruction, or functional bowel obstruction called adynamic obstruction. The mechanical bowel obstruction can be caused by adhesions, incarcerated hernias, or sangrated hernias. Cancers, appendicitis, the functional bowel obstruction, like what happens in paralytic areas, post-operative areas, after major surgery, laparotomy, what happens during the attacks of inflammatory bowel disease called IBD, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. These can cause attacks of uh, bowel obstruction. In a large bowel obstruction, just the same. I quickly. We can classify large bowel also. 
حنحكوا على classification of external obstruction we can uh, approach uh, we can classify external obstruction according to the speed of onset ممكن يكون acute external obstruction rapid onset with severe symptoms we can say chronic external obstruction means insidious onset with slow progressive symptoms we can uh, classify it according to the site high bowel obstruction versus low bowel obstruction we can classify bowel obstruction or external obstruction according to the integrity of blood supply of the bowel any presence or absence of blood supply of the occluded or the obstructed bowel we can classify simple bowel obstruction versus strangulate, strangulating bowel obstruction Sim simple bowel obstruction means the bowel is occluded but with intact blood supply strangulating bowel obstruction blood supply of the bowel is cut off or compromised this is top emergency strangulating bowel obstruction need urgent surgical intervention and correction etiology we can as we said before mechanical true bowel obstruction versus a mechanical or a dynamic paralytic bowel obstruction anatomical we can classify small bowel versus large bowel according to the lumen we can classify complete power obstruction versus incomplete power obstruction here we have the etiology of mechanical power obstruction we have the we have this uh, diagram representing this this lumen or this tube solid tube representing the bowel we have causes outside the bowel we have causes in the wall of the bowel we have causes inside the lumen of the bowel the causes that are outside the bowel very common like strangulating hernias here we have volvulus we have adhesion or bands like this abdomen full of scars it gives you a hint that we have in a lot of adhesion inside the abdomen or bands we have interception to the scooping of loop of bowel into the other part this is called interception especially in pediatric age group we have causes in the wall like absence of or like atresias, atresias, especially in the pediatric age group, Crohn's disease, transmural inflammation, tumors, the verticulites of the colon. We have causes inside the lumen of the bowel, like fecal impaction, large foreign body can obstruct the lumen of the bowel, called stone alias, stone can jump through a fistula between the group bladder, large stone can jump through a fistula between the group bladder and duodenum will go into the, the duodenum to the jejunum and eventually go to the ileum and can cause obstruction called goldstone alias goldstone alias now we want to talk about the pathology of the obstruction we have so we have this tube representing the bowel with the lumen the bowel we have here the obstructing lesion obstructing causing complete obstruction of the bowel what will happen there will be proximal dilatation or massive or large amount of dilatation proximal to the this to the obstructing lesion leading to <coughs> dilatation and accumulation of intestinal contents with its salts and acid leading to electrolyte disturbance and this obstruction called sequestration of third space this fluid it won't be it will not be absorbed by the circulation because it's sequestered it's isolated from circulation it can it cannot go down to reach to the venous channels so it will be sequestrated here as some the third space or sequestration the patient will have electrolyte disturbance, hypokalemia, hyponatremia, hypochloremia, metabolic alkalosis due to loss of acid, third space loss, dehydration, hypovolemic shock, and acute renal failure, pre-renal. And we have some local effect. We have we we'll have some bowel edema. And so this bowel edema, we have uh, venous congestion after venous congestion we will have arterial insufficiency 
arterial ischemia and then gangrene of the bowel, perforation of the bowel, secondary peritonitis, septicemia, septic shock, multi organ failure, bacterial translocation, and this is the end of part one of its obstruction. Please do not to subscribe. Do not, for, do not forget to subscribe to my channel, like and share our videos, and we will meet you in the second part of the lecture. Thank you very much.